finding the perfect smartwatch can be tricky. You've got the traditional options such as your Wear Rush smartwatches, the new Pixel watch or the Apple watches. However, finally, I can honestly say and recommend that we've got a great alternative from Huawei. You know, the Huawei watches from the past have offered some fantastic battery life and design, but don't quite have the feature set to back them up. So this is my first impressions and my initial review of the Huawei Watch 4 Pro. I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, what I like, what I don't like, my frustrations in what is fundamentally such a beautiful and elegant smartwatch, which is one of the nicest designs I've seen in a long time. It blends elegant design, fantastic build quality and materials, but it's hindered by some design features and software limitations that drive me absolutely mad. So if you like the video, please like, subscribe and comment below. So you've all seen the design for my uh, initial B-roll at the start of the video, but we'll go over a quick um, specifications and talk to you about the design very quickly. But like I say, you've seen most of it at the start of the video anyway. So we have a lovely curved display, um, which I was initially unsure about. But actually, when you're using the watch, oh my God, it adds to the experience. It really makes those watch faces that have been optimized for the watch pop. And it really adds a unique character to the smartwatch that you can't find on any other wearable device. The build quality is amazing as well. Again, one annoyance on the design, and I know why they've done it. They've done it for the water resistance, but look at this chunky band around here. It, you know, it's such an elegant design smartwatch. And then there's just this white band around that bottom button, which I, I could have thought they could have done a better job of disguising it. It would have been nice to see another button like this. So if we had two identical buttons, uh, think of that you know, on the appearance, it would have added to the, the stylistic, you know, appearance of the watch. Obviously, the, make no mistake, this is one big smartwatch, um, but the design, the quality of the materials are just fantastic. It's not actually super heavy for the size of the smartwatch, so it can make for quite a comfortable fit on the wrist. My favourite design feature has got to be how the strap blends into the body of the watch in a beautiful curved way around here. The strap itself, also is slightly curved and angled, so it just works effortlessly with the body of the smartwatch. So the watch is made out of a um, mixture between uh, titanium and zincronium, I believe. Um, it also has a sapphire glass display, which I actually did have on my Huawei Watch GT2 Pro, and it's definitely much more premium than on the Huawei Watch GT3, which crashed up in a matter of, sort of days when I actually first um, got this device. Um, so it's nice to see I've used the more premium materials on this. So for anyone who's used a Huawei watch before, all this is going to be familiar. So your top button here is your main button. So you've got your standard watch face. You can do race to wake, always on display. Um, I never have the always on display on. As soon as I tilt my wrist, the main watch face comes on. That's just how I prefer it. But again, it's personal preference. But push this button, you go into your apps tray. I quite like the design of this. Sometimes it can be quite hard to identify each app because some of the icons are, um, let's say, you know questionable in terms of the design but it's quite nice especially now as well as they sort of um you know they've improved it and made it much more uniform um, i like the fact that as you zoom in and out now you've got these bubbles around the outside that slowly um you know push the display like more zoomed in and again it's quite responsive and bright and vivid and that is nice but back to your main screen you can see you've got uh stress spo2 heart rate, calendars, uh, sleep tracking, skin temperature, heart rate, exercise goals for the day. And now this is new on the Huawei Watch 4 Pro. This is their customizable uh, widget screen. To be honest, I don't like it, um, but that's just personal preference. Again, it's nice to have, but not for me. I prefer the more simplistic design elements and much more bigger, you know, widgets. When you are quickly looking at a glance, they're easier to see and understand. Um, but it's nice and obviously all this is customizable as much as you want as well i've noticed you can add slightly more widgets to that home screen uh, which you couldn't do on the huawei gt3 but yeah all really easy to use all well designed um really really nice on the left now you've got this new widget design which to start with i wasn't a fan of but the more i use it the more i like it you can see it's quite a slick um it's quite a slick design ui and you really do notice the differences between this and some of the older Huawei smartwatches, you can really see that they've tried their best to really incorporate some nice design elements into the UI. 
again completely customizable unfortunately at the moment there's not a super amount of widgets you can have on that left hand screen you've also got the uh, huawei voice assistant which well let's be honest that that's not let's not go too much into that it's not the most useful voice assistant in the world um, it will do basic stuff like timer weather and stuff like that but it you know it doesn't sound very interested either now the bottom button's new again you've got these sort of shortcuts um, and it scrolls through again i don't understand why it scrolls through the same three all of the time why can't you add more or scroll for all of the watch functions through this I, I don't see any reason why you need to limit it to three so maybe that's going to come in an update uh, it's also nice that you've got the inbuilt um, exercise tracking with uh, training ai you know course guides and fitness tracking and everything like that but again this is not new this this is all you know you've seen this all before on huawei watches and in fact if you do want it specifically for sports look at the different series of huawei watches because this isn't the best i tried to import a route from um, kahoot um, a gpx file from another app as well and unfortunately it's only supported on the huawei uh, gt series so i don't understand why they haven't made it available to this smartwatch especially at the price that it costs so if you are watching Huawei, please sort that out. Now, one of my favourite design features and um, additions to the software is this remote shutter button. Um, so when you actually open this, you can get a live feed from the camera. Um, unfortunately, I can't do it now because I'm filming on the device. That's the watch. So you can see here as well, this is the settings menu for the watch. And again, I feel like this could have been a bit more well designed around the you know the curvature of the screen it could have been a bit more jazzed up you know we've seen this all before i'd like a bit more design sort of flair and you know influence on this it does the job and it's fine but we've seen it all before you know they've gone to so much effort designing the rest of the ui and the watch face that they could have just you know added a few more elements in here and there also it doesn't feel that quick and that's responsive and that's snappy it's it, Compared to the other watch, it's not quite as responsive and quite as quick. Everything just takes a bit too long to load. Let's see if I can show you what I mean. So we'll go to the settings menu. And you just got a slight delay. Um, but again, you can see the settings menu has been redesigned. It's much more colourful. I actually really like how they do the fonts and the layouts. Huawei Wallet, again, that's best not to talk about. There's no payment on this watch as currently. I'm hoping they will do their partnership with Curve Pay to get that on there. I have tried it on a Huawei smartphone using Curve Pay and there's still no joy and no luck. So unfortunately, there's no payment facilities available in the UK on this watch. I could talk about the health stuff. I can do a more in-depth video on the health stuff. But to be honest with you, if you want a better look at the health stuff, go and check some other videos out. This is more the everyday usability um, review first. I can go into some you know, health metrics and details and everything like that. Um, but you know there's a, a thousand videos out there that tell you that this gives you an idea of what apps is on there I've pre-installed a few um, again it is nice now that you get the functionality of the Huawei app gallery so if I load this up for you you can search apps and you can download some and unfortunately with the apps on here most of them are just absolutely crap or you've got six apps doing the same job that have different designs and different levels of actually how good they are so huawei's kind of just letting anyone you know put an app on the on the app store just to say that they've got enough you know they've got so many apps on there when really they should be streamlining what apps they actually put onto the watch to actually make the user experience of these apps much better notifications are really nice and really fluid as well and you can also get the quick replies you can message the replies uh, through speech um, or the keyboard um, so that's nice that you get both of those options as well it's nice changes that again, I haven't seen other people cover in their reviews and their videos is some of these watch faces are customizable uh, let's pick let's pick I don't know for example let's try and pick one that I know looks really really good when you start customizing the watch face 
so that's the, this one for example so this one is a moving watch face so you can see again it can use more battery life but and I don't personally like this one but it is nice to have the option but if you hold on the watch face and again it took me two attempts there it's not quite as fluid and as slick as you'd want it then tap the settings on icon And now you can pick which style you want. And again, mine currently seems to have actually lagged out here. So for some reason it's showing me both designs, which it shouldn't do that. But anyway, now I have this design on the watch. So if we're speaking battery life, um, it's it was on 100% last night, now it's on 71. Um, so I'm losing around 25 to 30% a day. Um, so that's gonna give you around three days to four days worth of battery life. Um, okay, if you was more careful, you could probably get, yeah, I'd say four days at a stretch out of it, um, which I don't think is too bad given the, you know, how the quality of the display is, how bright and vivid the display is. Um, but also some of the nice features you get on there. Because obviously don't forget this is an eSIM smartwatch so you can connect an eSIM. Again as of yet I haven't seen anybody show you the power saving mode so I will show you that power saving mode now. You activate that from swiping down to the notifications panel and then selecting ultra battery mode. So you can see you still get your nice watch faces but on this actual watch face you can't no longer uh, use the scroll wheel to look around the earth. It's just a very stripped back experience settings menu even that sort of stripped back as well so you can see now less apps are available and less measurements even for your health apps are available so it's a really streamlined experience the best way i can describe this is it's nice in a way because now you've got all the features you had on the huawei watch gt3 but nothing more which again sounds absolutely fine but the problem is when you've spent the money on this lovely smartwatch for all these features you don't want to pair back all of them so it would be nice if there was like a customizable battery saver mode where you could you know turn the eSIM off because you don't want to use the eSIM and get an extra I don't know five days off a of battery life out of it but not lose all the features so it'd be nice if we saw a much more customizable battery mode you can also see now it no longer does the bubbles around the outside when you zoom in and out it's more just your standard interface you also lose the widgets on the home screen and the notification support is also paired back along with the widgets so overall much more paired back experience but then if you are going away for the weekend and you want to preserve battery life it's a nice option again it also unfortunately takes absolutely ages to reload into the main um your standard mode it takes absolutely ages so i'm going to spare you the time so i hope you enjoyed the video please like comment and subscribe below and of course, as always, no brand received editorial access or first viewing. You're seeing it right alongside them.